radar. So I'll just come up and be like, hey, um, I have a giveaway. Actually, I've already picked the person. I'm going to have them go ahead and come up while, I'm, while they're coming up. I just want to share a little of my heart behind this giveaway, blah, 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 blah. And then... Hey, if you want me to pray, we need open doors. No.
Good morning and welcome to Mountaintop Church Online. My name is James. I'm the media director here at Mountaintop and we are so glad to have you joining us this morning. It's a great day to be at Mountaintop. Today is VBS kickoff Sunday, so get ready. Today's service is going to look a little bit different. You're going to get a taste of the fun that our kids at Vacation Bible School are going to enjoy all week. Our theme this year is Make Waves, and we're going to focus on how the things that we do, even as children, can make a difference in the world around us. So be in prayer this week for the kids at VBS. It's going to be an awesome week. And today, we're also going to celebrate the return of our college ministry team from Costa Rica. It was an incredible experience. We're going to play a video during the service that will give you a peek at what happened on that trip, but be sure to watch the full video online at mountaintopchurch.com slash Costa Rica. Today, we're also celebrating the return of our student team from a mission trip in Phoenix, Arizona. We've got some photos for you, and we're going to hear from our student pastor during the service about that trip. Here at Mountaintop, we are for you, for Birmingham, and for the next generation. So we've got a whole lot to celebrate today. Starting next Sunday, we're going to begin a new series that coincides with our 30-year anniversary as a church here at Mountaintop. We're going to celebrate each decade of ministry starting on June 12th. It's going to be a lot of fun as we reflect on the last 30 years and look ahead at our direction for the next 30. Now, one last thing. I know a lot of you join us online every week, but if you're new here or if you would like to learn more about Mountaintop, go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen, or you can text the word NEXT to the number on your screen. You'll receive a link that will take you to our website where you can find out more about the next steps available to you here at Mountaintop. We would love an opportunity to connect with you. The service is going to start in just a few minutes. Thanks again for joining us. I'll check in with you again at the end of the service.
Here we go. Oh, I bet I could see some adults jumping too. Come on, sing. You are good. He is worthy. Here we go. You are good. This much I know. I can trust you. Amen. I can trust you. Your faithful hand won't let me go. I can trust you. I don't understand. I can see your plan for the road ahead. I can trust you. When I lose my way, don't have words to say or the strength to pray. I can trust you. Yes. Awesome. Give your neighbor a high five. You can have a seat. Thank you, VBS worship team. Well, good morning. We are so glad you're here. My name is Jenna, and welcome to our VBS family kickoff services. Who's excited for today? It's going to be an awesome day, whether you are here with us in the room or whether you're dancing at home or from the real beach. We are so glad you're here. It's going to be an awesome week. Now, if you are new here, this is not our typical service. Normally, we've got a band behind us. Normally, the kids are downstairs. But kids, we are so pumped that you are here today. Are you excited to be here? I see your VBS shirts. Who's excited for VBS, kids? Yes. So this week, we're going to give you a little, or today, we're going to give you a sneak peek of what the kids will experience all week. We're going to have 250 kids flood this campus. Almost 100 leaders, it's gonna be incredible. So, but if you are new here today, we would love to connect with you. And one of the ways you can help us do that is by scanning the QR code on the seat back in front of you or on your screen. Um, and today is the first Sunday of the month, so that means it's Meet the Pastor Sunday. So if you've never met our staff and would love to meet them, they would love to meet you, and you can do that at a table right outside the auditorium after the service. Speaking of Meet the Pastors, I would love to introduce you to our next generation pastors. Give it up for Melissa, Josh, and Jake. <laughs> awesome. Well, as Jenna said, I'm Melissa Sanderson. I get the privilege to be the kids pastor here at Mountaintop. And we are thrilled about VBS and just the opportunities it brings to invest in kids. And we could not do pull off this week without your generosity. As Jenna mentioned, 250 kids are coming. We do not charge for VBS. It's free. And so you guys help us to do that. And I just want to say thank you this morning for that. And again, just for investing and believing in this next generation. And you can continue to give to the ministry and mission of Mountaintop this morning. And on the screen behind me, there are ways that you can do that digi digitally. There you go. Can't say that word. <laughs> um, and also, if you're in the room and you have a tangible gift, that you can give that at the boxes that are on the wall when you exit today. So, yeah, we could not do it without your gifts, but also so many volunteers. Jenna just mentioned this. A hundred volunteers have invested it in VBS for us. Some of them have already been helping us decorate the church. You probably saw that this morning. Um, and then there's so many that are going to come invest in the kids this week. And so we're so grateful for that. Half of them are our students. And we could, I don't know, we would be lost without our students. Um, you've already seen them on stage this morning, but just so grateful for their hearts to serve. Absolutely. And this past week, we actually, I got to see our students' heart to serve on display. We just got back from Phoenix, Arizona on Friday. What was that? Actually, well, Saturday, Saturday morning. morning. <laughs> uh, so I uh, got back at 1230, and it was an incredible trip. Uh, we got to serve with three or four different nonprofits in the area, and one of them uh, was probably the highlight of our students. We went down this area called the Canal. And so if you've been to Arizona, you know that it's really hot and it's really dry and there's no water. Uh, but there's this canal that runs through that a lot of the homeless people are just lined up on. I mean, there's tents and tarps just lining this whole strip. And our students walked down and handed out bags of hygiene and bottles of water. And it was just so encouraging just to see our students serve with excellence and with diligence. And in fact, one of our students actually sat up and said, hey, is it okay if we take our time and pray over some of the people we encounter? That was a student that talked to a guide. And so just really, really uh, inspiring to see them do that. And you saw our students, they jumped right back into serving on stage this morning. So I don't know how they, they had the energy to do that. <laughs> it's a long week. Mission trips can be long weeks. And I know that 
too, is that, uh, our college pastor. I just led our first uh, college mission trip a few weeks ago. We took a group of 20 to Costa Rica, um, and we ministered to some people there in Costa Rica through missionaries that we support as a church here. And so uh, when you give to Mountaintop, know that uh, you uh, impact uh, the generations. You in- impact the next generation here in Birmingham with, with kids and students, like think, making things like Phoenix possible, and you impact our college students by making things like our trip to Costa Rica possible, but you also impact kids all over the world. Um, we got to go to a community just outside of San Jose, Costa Rica called Los Guido, and we took some of the supplies that we're using for VBS this week with us and did a one-day kind of VBS activity with the kids there at a school we were partnering with, and we wanted you to hear more about that and see more about that, so check out this video. I can't talk with them, but it doesn't mean... Oh! <laughs> It doesn't mean that I can't uh, communicate with them and have fun with them. (laughs) Um, So that's been really cool to see. Can you see me? Day at Escola Cristiana Los Guido, um, we got the opportunity to, to hang out with the kids and to teach them a little bit, um, uh, kind of like VBS style. Fruit grows on trees, right? <laughs> so we taught them about the fruit of the spirit and um, then did a craft with them and played a game with them um, that kind of taught them the different aspects of the fruit of the spirit. Things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness. And then to teach them about how like, when we have Jesus in our heart, um, that produces that type of fruit in our life. So that first day, you know, we got to, to reconstruct their playground, play with them a little bit. And then on, the, on that second day, um, we got to go out into their community and see not how they were, you know, treated at that school, but how they were living in everyday life in their homes out in, um, in Los Guido. And so then on that third day, to get to actually sit down with them and have conversations and interact with them on a more intimate level, it was really awesome to watch our students uh, begin to realize that in just a few short days, they could have an impact on a kid's life um, and show them the love of Jesus in just little small ways that might make an impact um, beyond our time there in Costa Rica. Um, And it was cool because what was happening was we were teaching those kids in Costa Rica about the fruit of the Spirit. And all throughout that day, I saw the fruit, of dis- the fruit of the Spirit on display in the lives of our college students. That is so awesome. That trip looked amazing, Melissa. It actually reminded me of when we got yep. to go, yep. and it makes me miss those families, and makes me just think of the fun that we had while we yep. were able to teach and learn together the truths that VBS can teach us. Yep. And I think we're going to have that chance to do that all this week and also today because we're going to learn some biblical truths but have yep. some crazy fun in the process. Yes. So what do you have for us right now? Well, I thought it would be fun to play a game. Ooh, okay, uh, games are Because we're going to be playing a lot of games during VBS. Okay. And this game is for three dads, and I think we already oh, have them chosen. Dads. What's, so what's if, the game So if Chris called? came and found you, Ooh, okay. I believe it was Zach Russell, oh, Zach. yeah, and okay. Chad, oh, Corey. and Corey. Chad, oh, come on down. We got some lifeguard training yes, for we, you, gentlemen. We got some. Come on <laughs> down. Oh, I can't tell who's more pumped. I know. They, they look s- excited. Yeah. We're going to look- find the best lifeguard out of this crew. How are we doing, Zach? Maybe we can come here. Corey, Chad. Okay, so what are we going to do for their training? I mean, lifeguard training can okay, get well, pretty we're gonna, intense. Yeah, we're going to yeah. have four stations. Um, the okay. first thing we're going to have to do, though, is we have to get geared up. 
Yeah, because lifeguards need uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. Things okay. like floaties and flippers and goggles. Okay. Okay. That's what I see on lifeguards. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Okay, yep. so when we say go, whoever gets their lifeguard uniform Can't. on the fastest. Zach was trying to sorry. cheat over there. Wins. Are saw, you ready? I saw that. On your mark, get set, go. go. Okay, here they go. Oh, look at these floaties. <laughs> they wanna, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, yes, this is awesome. Come Good. on, come on, okay, come on. Great. Oh, man, flippers. Oh, oh we're almost oh. done over here. Okay. Oh, this is How awesome. How are we doing? Okay, oh. here we go. Okay. It, it's oh, a... we got gla oh, Okay. This is amazing. Yes. Oh, oh Corey's oh. done. Winner. Okay. <laughs> the flipper's not all the way on. Okay. Oh, wait, his goggles aren't on. Okay, that was awesome. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, but keep your uniforms on because this is just the first part of training. Yeah, you're gonna you need part put of your... a, Go ahead oh, and finish that. You gotta keep you're going. Gonna, Are you sure? Yes, you you're it, gonna need it for the rest of the time. You're gonna especially need this. Here, I'm gonna help you help the, here we go. There we, we go. We have a little okay. problem with your so, goggles. So, okay. our next part of training is, you know, cause sometimes, yeah, you gotta get people's attention cause it could save their lives, right? So you need really strong breath support, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna need those goggles. I don't. Like I don't oh, think they're that's, big that's enough. Okay, they'll be I fine. I think there. we that's bought fine. the child okay. size. Just put it on your arm. Yeah, just put it on your ear. Or your okay. ear. Okay. So here's the thing. You're gonna have to get people's attention. It could save their lives with those whistles. So on the count of three, we're all gonna inhale at the same time, and the last person to complete the exhale wins. Okay. Ready? One. So one, two, three. Inhale. Ready? One, two. Three, go! <laughs> Just one exhale. They're still going. Raise your hand when you're done exhaling. Oh, we're done. We're still going. Wow. Oh. Wow. I think. Okay. Corey wins again. Corey, Corey gets that point. That was amazing. Okay. All oh, right. Oh, our next one. Yes. Oh, we we got to rescue some people. We got to okay. rescue these cones. That, so are, that here, are people. Here are the people that you're going to yep. have to rescue. So, but you know, one of the ways that lifeguards save people is by throwing out the lifesavers, right? The life preservers. So, you're going to each have four little, you know, these are your four life preservers. So, we're going to see in 30 seconds how many life preservers you can get on the cones. If you get all four on, we'll take them off and you just keep mm -hmm. going. Are you ready to save some lives? Here we go. Ready? Okay, I was just making sure everybody's even. On your mark. Get set, go! Oh. oh. No! <laughs> okay. Well, just keep no. going. No, just keep you got to stay there. No, no, keep that's going. True. I mean, that's true. Oh. Okay, look, you, look, you're. <laughs> They're scooting up. You can scoot up. I mean, that's yep. Go retrieve them. Go oh. retrieve them. How okay. much time? Eight, seven, six, six five, five, four, three. <laughs> Two, one. Yay! We got a cheater up here. I mean, you know, I mean that was that was pretty clever. But I mean, I'll yeah, maybe you. a point for creativity. Yeah, there. I think so. Okay, this last training exercise, oh. I think it's the most important. I do too, Melissa, because mm -hmm. you know we got to see how much Hoff you got in you, Hasselhoff that is. Okay, so. So what you need to do is be ready for that lifeguard training video and beach running in slow-mo. That's the best. So you gotta have your game face on like you're intense. You're about to go save some lives. So for 30 seconds, you get to look into those cameras and give us your best slow-mo Hoff run. Are you ready? We're looking for style here. We're yep. looking for facial expressions. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? On your mark. All right, we got to judge them, Jenna. Oh, yeah. Get set. Go. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> we got a hair swipe. Okay. That was amazing. Okay. 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 Oh, no. I don't know. That was, I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, I don't know. look I don't at that. Know. We got 10 seconds. That's incredible. Rewarding that was points. amazing. Oh! <laughs> How do you 
you judge I don't that? know. I'm crying. How do you award I don't that? Know. I, I do don't think know. the first thing that caught my attention was the hair swipe. Okay. And then he actually dove into the ocean. So I think Zach wins that <laughs> one. Good job. Okay. So, oh man, Miss Melissa, that was uh, pretty impressive. That I was. think they could all be hired this week to be our life. I do too. Do you think so? But I yeah. can't really remember who won the most points. Because oh. we do we do have a prize. <laughs> you know what? I think Corey won the two games at first, so we'll give okay. Corey the prize. But then we've got for you guys. Hey, we've don't got worry, some you you're not leaving empty handed, but Corey do, 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 grand do, do, do. prize. Yep. For yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, good job. Gummy sharks. Gummy We've got sharks. Some gummy sharks for you. Yes. Give our hand, give a hand to our lifeguards. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, good oh. job. That here, I'll hug you. <laughs> oh man. That was awesome. Okay, Miss Melissa, that was pretty fun. Yep. I mean, if that we had that was better than I expected in my head. Yeah. If we I had that laughing. much fun with the adults, that's amazing. Okay, oh, so what else do we have for fun this week? Well, like you said, we like to engage scripture, dive in. We're going to be teaching the kids truths, and there's a memory verse that we're going to awesome. be teaching the kids all week. So I thought it would be great for us to learn it okay, as awesome. well. Let's hear it. All right, so our memory verse comes from Ephesians 2.10, and it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2.10. All right, let's say that together. <laughs> Ready, go. For, For we are God's handiwork, created, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, works which God prepared in advance for us to do. do. Ephesians 2.10. 2, I think we should do it one more time. And Maybe see a competition? The, yeah, Is that what you're see thinking? if okay. the boys or the girls can okay. be louder. I like okay? it. Dads versus moms. Ready? Here we go. For we wait, 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 wait. Oh. Who's going first? Oh, I, you I'm didn't just, tell us. Oh, we're going to do one at a time. That's good. Okay. Let's Are we start going with boys? The, yeah, let's do. Should we do boys first? Let's do boys first. Okay. Boys, dads, Here we go. dudes. Ready? <laughs> go. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2 10. Okay. That I was, think the ladies. That was super manly. It was okay. pretty manly. All right, ladies, ready, go. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good, which God prepared in advance for us. Ooh. I mean, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Ladies. Okay. All right. Ladies, well, good job. But everybody's a winner. Everyone's a winner. I think we should reward them because I bet they already know the verse. Yeah. But so I, I think we have some things. One to, thing I noticed, though, Miss Melissa, some people don't have VBS shirts. We should launch some out into oh, the crowd. Yes. I think we should. Here, okay. Oh, Come good. on Here out. Here comes our team. launch team. We got some T-shirt launchers. We got some hat launchers. Okay. So, oh, let's go. All right. Who's, All right, who's ready get, to launch? We get to do the hats, okay. Miss Jenna. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Don't Who hit me. Some? Who wants who shirt? wants it? Who wants a hat? Go! Oh! There we go! Who wants a hat? Here we go! Hey! Oh. <laughs> Do one that way! Point one that way! Point it that way! Here they go! Oh! oh. That's okay! One more! Come Here on, we go. guys! One you got more. it! Thank you, worship team. That was great. Okay, have fun with those. All right, one other thing we're going to do all week is we are going to have a theme song that we're going to teach the kids that they're going to sing every single day. And we thought we would ask some awesome moms who like choreography to get up here and dance with us. Moms, do I see any moms? Stacy, do I see Stacy? You've got, oh, come on. Who else? <laughs> Where are my other moms? Okay, let's see. Andrea Lay, come on down. Here we go. Where are my other moms? Who do I come on? I need another mom. I need one more mom. Here we go. Come on, Stacy. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Lindsay, come on. Andrea. Here we go. All right. 
This is, <laughs> here we go. Okay, ladies. Well, here, you can stand here. Yeah, there we go. Come on. So we're going to teach you some moves. But guess what? Y'all get to learn them too. So everybody stand up. Here we go. All right. So we're going to go like this. We're making waves. No stopping. We're moving along. We're making waves. Everybody, all people belong. Yeah. We got a lot of life to live and a lot of love to give. We're making waves. Oh, there we go. Okay. I think we should go for it. Are you ready? Are you all ready? Here we go. Oh, come on. Hey, yes. great job on picking those guys. Here we go, ladies. I was hey, laughing so hey. hard. Sing it, Jordan. Come on. Yeah. God, I'm so amazed by your goodness. I love the way that you love me. I got this joy flowing deep in my soul now. And I just want the world to see. Here we go. With your love inside me. Oh, I can. Oh, I forgot to teach that part. That's okay. Just clap along. Here we go. So everybody, come on. Good job, good job. So what is your favorite thing to do at the beach? So, somebody said go to the pool. Like, that's actually not the beach, but what did you say? Make a sandcastle? That's good. What else? Swim, yeah, what about, what about you? What was that? Look for creatures. That's good. My, so my favorite thing to do at the beach is to sit in my beach chair and read. So it's, it's a total dad move, isn't it? Like I love it, you know, when 
when uh, when the the boys always kind of like they'll go in, and maybe my wife Emily she'll go in, and I'll, and I'll just like stay, I'll just stay. And so uh, one of the things I always read is. So I read a lot, and I'm mostly reading about leadership, church, and theology. So I'll make it a point when we go to the beach that I don't pick any book that has anything to do with those. I always do something just for fun. Most of the time, I'm reading an autobiography or a biography about somebody. I read Shoe Dog about, by Phil Knight about the founding of Nike. A couple years ago, I read Ball Player by Chipper Jones, his autobiography. I've got one on the docket for next summer already. Dave Grohl's mom wrote a book about raising a rock star. And I'm going to read that book. But this summer, I'm already pumped because I have my book. I'm ready to go. I'm going to read Kirk Herbstreet's autobiography. Out of the Pocket, Football, Fatherhood, and College Game Day Saturdays, which if you add Jesus and Emily to that, that's my life. <laughs> Jesus, Emily, Football, Fatherhood, and College Game Day Saturdays. That's kind of, so I love doing that. I love doing that. And it's one of the things that we always have to make sure that I have in our beach wagon when we go. There's all kinds of things I have in the, in the beach wagon. Uh, you have to have, of course, the beach hat, right? Speaking of dad move, right? You got to have a beach hat. You got to have uh, a Frisbee. You got to have, uh, for us... Oh, dude! That is a totally rad beach wagon! Yeah, like I was telling everybody, and you've got to have... Like, we always have our shovel to make sandcastles. Whoa, Anybody else have a shovel? This is a rad beach hat! That's not a hat. That's oh, a cooler. Um, awesome. Yeah, that's... Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is like the biggest beach frisbee I've ever seen. That's, whoa. That's... Um, Sorry. That's actually... Who are you? Hi, I'm, I'm Betsy. Nice to meet Betsy, you. This yes. Is a, yes. Well, this, this is, is a, a boogie. Rad. This is a boogie board. Oh, a boogie board? Yes. I could have sworn it was a frisbee. Uh, you could use it for both. No, maybe. yes. No? Well, yeah. I'm Betsy. It's so good to be here. Good to I'm see actually, you. Maybe you I'm kind help of me. in the middle of something. Oh, well, yeah. I was wondering if I could ask you some directions. Okay. I'm, I'm looking for some place called VBS. V I traveled here a long way. I'm looking for a VBS. Where'd you Has come anybody from, seen where that Betsy? is? Where'd you come from? Well, the beach. I the walked, beach. I okay. walked here all the way from Hawaii. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That was a long yeah. walk. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is Have actually the kickoff to VBS. <gasps> That's kind of what we're doing. Awesome. Yeah. Cowabunga, guys. Are you excited? Oh, are you going to be here for VBS? I will be here all week long. Me too. Okay. So I'll see you there. We'll see you. I better get set up, though. I got my things. You probably I'll should. I'll probably go find somewhere to settle down, make a sandcastle or something. You should. All right. I'll yeah. see you guys this week. It's, it's that way. All right. Awesome. Yeah. I have a feeling that's not the last run-in I'm going to have with Betsy this week. <laughs> so when we go to the beach, and you can imagine, some of you are, are new. I'm so glad to meet you. My name is Carter, and I'm the pastor here at Mountaintop, and we're so glad that you've come. And if you're watching online, thanks for being here. I, I have four boys, so when we go to the beach, we have six chairs, four boogie boards, a big cooler, this is approximately what it looks like when we take off from Birmingham to go to the beach. Uh, it, looks a <laughs> it looks a little bit like that, right? Like we've got the whole, like the shell on top of the minivan, and it's full. It is so full, we can barely make it there. We can barely fit there. And, but all of the, here's what's interesting about these things. All of these things are really important to the trip. We're, we're big. We love this. We love bocce ball at the beach. Anybody else love bocce ball at the beach? It's funny, we don't ever play bocce ball any other time, but at the beach we always play bocce ball. And everything that is in our wagon that is loaded up is all super important to having a great day at the beach. And if we, if we miss something, then it kind of messes up the day. But if we don't use them for the right purpose, well, they they don't work because bocce balls is great to play bocce ball, but bocce balls don't make good sunglasses. And when I sit down to read my book, if I try to sit on my hat, well, 
it doesn't provide much back support. Because here's what we know about when we go to the beach and are kind of about everything in life is that everything has a purpose. Engineers and designers created everything to have a unique purpose, and everything in our beach wagon has a purpose. Frisbee is meant to be a Frisbee, and a football is meant to be a football, and sunscreen is meant to be sunscreen. And some really smart engineer designed and created and developed these things, and they did trial and error, and they made these things. And if you try to use a Frisbee as sunscreen, well, that won't work very well. Everything has a purpose. And if you use it for the purpose for which it was created, it works great. But if you use it for something else, it just doesn't make sense. You didn't use it for the reason that the designer and the engineer made it. Everything has a purpose. And guess what? Everyone also has a purpose. You, every kid in here, You teenager, you college student, you adult, you have a unique purpose. You have a designer, a master engineer who made you just the way he meant to. And because of that, you have a unique purpose. Now, I want to tell you all about a verse that you've already learned, our memory verse, a little bit in just a minute, uh, about why that purpose is so important. But before we do, before I just kind of lean into that memory verse, I want to read, there's two verses that come right before it. The Apostle Paul said this, right before it, in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this, it's not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not by works. It's not by what you do. Because there's reason for that. So that no one can boast. The reason I wanted to read those verses that come right before our memory verse and the reason that the Apostle Paul wrote them, is that he wants to make it clear that our good works or our deeds have no bearing, zero bearing on God's love for us. They have no bearing. They have no bearing on whether or not God saves us. We are saved by that. What does it say we're saved by? Grace through what? Through faith. By grace through faith, it's a total 100% gift. In other words, you can't earn it. In other words, Paul says, so none of us could brag and be about, oh, look, God loves me so much because of how good I am at this, or God loves me so much because I can do this and you can't do that. Paul says no one would ever have the right to brag about God's love for them because God's love is not dependent on what you can do. God's love is not dependent on how talented you are or how good looking you are or how skilled you are or how smart you are or how athletic you are or how much money you have. We can never say, look at me, look at me, look at me. So my purpose, my abilities is not tied. They're they're not tied to God's love for me. I receive it by faith, not works. So, how God sees me then has nothing to do with my gifts or my abilities. So, my perception then of myself, my identity is rooted in God's love for me, which was a gift. And I'm the same as everyone else. See, this is a problem because sometimes we give our self-identity and our self-perception on our gifts, our talents, our skills, and we kind of get jealous of somebody else, and that becomes our identity, and we think less of ourselves. And Paul says you should never think less of yourselves because you're all loved. We're all loved, and none of us 
none of us can do it. So your perception shouldn't be shaped by that because the world will kind of try to weigh what gifts or talents, right? I mean, come on. Come on. A boogie board is way cooler than a beach hat, right? Way cooler than a beach hat. But try wearing a boogie board as a hat. You see, that's why you shouldn't place your value, your identity. You shouldn't have your perception on what your gifts or talents are because none of our gifts and talents earn it. Here's what the Apostle Paul is trying to say to us. It's just this simple. All of us can receive God's grace and none of us can achieve God's grace. All of us. So no matter if you think, well, gosh, I can't do what so-and-so can do, or I'm not as gifted, or I'm not as talented, or you don't know. Some of the adults in the room, I know what you're thinking. I remember when I was one of those innocent kids. Are you sure, Carter, you don't know what I've done? Are you sure you don't know what my teenage years were like? Are you sure you don't know my story? And Paul says, your story has no bearing on God's love for you. You are saved by grace. It is free. It is unmerited. It is a gift. And none of us can achieve God's grace. So you think, you think that, oh man, this person that works at the church or this person that does this or this person in my office, they're so much better than me. God loves them more than me. No, no, no. All of us can receive it and none of us can achieve it. And that's so critical to understanding who we are that we're all in the same boat because none of us can brag. But come on. Though we are on level ground at the feet of Jesus, We're not all the same, right? Some of us are taller. Some of us are faster. Some moms can dance better than other moms. Right? Some of us are really good with numbers. Some of us are great at music. Some of us are better at drawing. Some of us can see a stack of Legos and just build something really cool. And, and here's, here's the deal. The world will try to divide us, judge us, and rank us based on those things. And kids, some of you are getting ready to go into middle school in a year or two. And I want to tell you something. That's going to get worse. In middle school, the people are going to say, well, oh, you're cool because you can do this, or you're in this kind of group because you can do that, or you play this sport, or you're in this club, or you're in this chorus group, or you're on the math team, or whatever it is, and they're going to try to judge you, rank you, and I wish I could tell you that would end at middle school. I thought it did, and then Facebook came along. And we judge and we rank. And what we found out is that our society is still kind of in middle school. And we group by what's ta- by our talents. And that's not how God works at all. You are loved. You receive grace by none of your abilities, skills, or talents. We're all undeserving. And if that's true, if God's grace is a gift, then all of a sudden it begins to change the way that I see my differences because in our theme verse Paul said this for we are God's what does it say handiwork some translations say masterpiece you're God's masterpiece the word is only used two times in the whole Bible It's often used to describe a piece of cloth, something that a designer tangibly made, a fabric that's a masterpiece, that's a a handiwork of God. You are a tangible product that God designed just for the universe the way he meant you to be. Your gifts, your talents, your skills, the way you look, the way you sound. It is just the way God meant it to be. When you look in the mirror, kids, look at me, look at me, look at me. When you go home tonight and you brush your teeth, and you're going to brush your teeth tonight, right? (laughs) 
and you look in the mirror, you're looking at a masterpiece. And Paul then, do you remember that verse that Melissa and Jenna taught us? It says, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. You're a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works. As God's handiwork, we are created to do good good works. The vision that God had for us before we were born is what he needed us to do, and he prepared you for that. He already decided that he loved you. He already decided that he loved you and because you're saying, well, I wish I could do what she could do or wish I could do what he did or I wish I looked like her or I wish I looked like him or I wish I could run as fast as him or I wish I could sing like her. No, 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 no. He already decided that he loved you. He just needs you to do what only you can do to fit the purpose he created for you. So when we try to be someone else, we actually mess up his plan. When we try to look like somebody else or try to act like somebody else, we actually miss out on the purpose God created us for. And none of, and you know what? Then the world doesn't quite work. Because a beach hat doesn't make a good chair. And despite what Betsy thinks, a boogie board doesn't make a frisbee. So when you try to be somebody else, God looks at you and he says, why do you want to be a frisbee when I made you to be a cool boogie board? Why do you want to be a beach chair when I made you to be a beach hat so dads could look cool on the beach? Why won't you just be what I made you to be. And when we find our purpose, when we lean into our gifts and do what God has called us to do, created us to do, and prepared for us to do, you'll make waves. And the whole world will feel the ripple effect of you doing and being exactly who God created you to be. God made you to make a difference. God made you to make a difference, and only you can make the difference he made you to make. Years ago, I was was going through a... um, I think what they call it is a midlife crisis. But it was just sort of this existential crisis inside of, I was just asking God about really who he was calling me to be, uh, what it meant for me to be a pastor for the next half of my life, and, and, and what it meant for me to be, like, who was I in the world? And I had a lot of voices at that time in my life telling me, you should do this, you should be this, you should act like this, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And we went on a family trip, and I saw this sign, and I bought it immediately, and I put it in my office when I got back. And this is what the sign says. The world needs who you were made to be. The world needs who you were made to be. Now, that's not in the Bible, but it sure sounds an awful lot like you are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The world needs who you were made to be, kids. And what I hope this week you find more than anything, and I hope everyone that's watching today and here today knows that God needs you to be who he created you to be. God made you to make a difference. And if you won't be you, then you can't make the difference 
that he created you to do. Heavenly Father, let me pray for us. Thank you for giving us unique talents and skills and abilities. And Lord, we know that we live in a world where it's so easy to compare ourselves. We look online and we compare ourselves. We get on Instagram and we compare our family to that family. We look across the classroom and we compare ourselves to that kid in that classroom. We go to recess and we compare ourselves to what that kid can do. And it's so easy. We go to the office and we compare ourselves to the other salesman who sold more than us. And we compare ourselves to that teacher whose kids scored better than us. And we compare ourselves to those parents whose kids seem to be doing a little bit better than ours. And we compare ourselves to this family who's a little bit further in their career and it's so easy God to compare ourselves and when we do that Lord we know that we we don't make the waves that we were meant to make Lord my prayer is that every person in this room would know that they are already loved and they don't have to measure up to you for anything they don't have to do anything for you to love them. And if they would own that, perhaps, God, then we could just do what we were created to do and not worry about what everybody else thinks about it and not worry about how we compare and just make the waves we're supposed to make and we'll trust you to take that ripple where you want to take it in this world in Jesus name amen this is a closing song that we're going to sing at the end of every day I'd love to teach it to you today and while you're learning it and then singing along I'd love for you just to pray that the kids would hear these truths the leaders as well yeah worship team you can come on up that, those, that that truth, um, that God made them for a purpose, would be cemented in their hearts. Three, four. Some days I compare myself to others. Most try to earn your love but every day like the waves upon the sea you constantly remind me that you made me you saved me i'm created with a purpose and part of I'll sing that with me. You made me. You made me. You saved me. I'm created with a purpose and part of your plan. I'm chosen. I'm accepted. I'm invited to change the world around me. You A good reminder this week and what I hope that we'll find not only to this morning but this week kids is I hope you will begin to discover the purpose that God has for your life because I want to tell you something 
the world needs who you were created to be. So let's find it out this week. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I have uh, um, a giveaway today, and it's actually going to go to Stacey Loper since she was up here and came up, the first one up here to dance. But um, as she comes to get this, I just want to share a little bit of my heart about, uh, around this. It is a Making Waves devotion. Um, and we are praying that these kids come and they learn truths this week that will impact their faith and that they encounter Jesus and we always want to do that when they're with us on Sunday mornings or during VBS. But we also have a heart for these kids to learn in your homes too because we know that when the church and families work together, it can have a greater impact on the heart of a kid. And so we just want to encourage you guys. I know summer, especially for our family, it's a different rhythm. It's a little bit slower. Um, and it's a chance that you can engage scripture as a family or pray as a family. So we always want to be partnering with you, giving you tools, letting you know. We're actually, that devotion will take what we're learning at VBS and also the whole summer, we are going to be baking waves on Sunday mornings. That's our curriculum for June and July. So that devotion takes what we're learning and goes a little bit deeper for your family. So maybe you weren't up here dancing like Stacy, but there is a place on the website where you can grab a copy um, for your family and just would encourage you to do that. Again, it's our heart that your kid just continues to learn and grow and learn what it looks like to follow Jesus. Yeah. And so it's going to be a great week, Melissa. Yep. And uh, so I, I thought I want to invite everybody here to be a part of this week. You may say, gosh, I came, some of you came for the first time. I, met, I know I met a few folks that were here for the first time, and I was like, well, it's a different Sunday. I <laughs> promise you it'll be fun, uh, but it'll be different. The next week we probably won't, like, you know, shoot T-shirts at people's probably heads. Not. Probably not. Um, <laughs> So, but I, I would love for you, even if you don't have kids or maybe your kids are little or no matter what, that you can participate this week. And there's, there's a couple of ways. We start at nine o'clock every day, right? Yep. Uh, so I, what I want you to do, and if you're at home watching this, no matter what state you're in, if you want to get out your phones right now, get your phones out right now. I know most churches tell you, like, put them up. I'm telling you, get them out. <laughs> get your phones out. I'd love for you to set an alert at 9 a.m. for Monday through Thursday this week. And for you, when that goes off and you're at your office or whatever, I, I want, or you're at home, whatever you're doing, and if it's just a reminder that I want to take a moment and pray for that day at VBS. Pray for students, kids, pray for our leaders. So we would love for you to do that. And also, everybody, even if you don't have kids, is invited Thursday night to the block party, yep. right? Yes, absolutely. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have inflatables. We're going to have, uh, you can do, uh, if you want a Chick-fil-A dinner, there's $5 tickets for sale in the, in the atrium. Yes, we, we got some amens for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> everybody loves Christian chicken. Um, so... You can do that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And you can bring, if you got a friend, a neighbor, that, that especially with, with the kids, bring them to the block party. Go buy their tickets right now and say, hey, I got you tickets. You've got free dinner, and you come. The party's free. The food's the only thing you have to pay for. But it, just bring them for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, hey, two quick things, next steps for everyone. Next week, we begin a brand new series uh, called 3 for 30, where we're going to begin three weeks to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Mountaintop Church. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah. <clears throat> I believe the actual 30th anniversary is tomorrow or Tuesday of the very first service. So we're hitting it right on the nose. Next week, so each week we're going to celebrate what God did in that each decade and look like what God's going to got planned for us in the next 30 years. So next week is 90 Sunday. We're going to start 92 to 99. So I listen, today this is going to be a fun month. You wore Hawaiian today. I want you to wear your best 90s outfit next week. <laughs> come on. Come on. I got a closet full of it. Right? <laughs> So I expect some great 90s outfits, some tight roll jeans, all the whole deal, right? Hey, if you are brand new or new-ish here at Mountaintop and you've only been here, you know, a couple of weeks, months, or today's your first Sunday, I'd love to meet you at Meet the Pastor right out when you go out the door. There's a tent, and we will give you a free T-shirt if you'll come to Meet the Pastors. We would love to get to know you a little bit more. Hey, we say this every week because we mean it, we believe it. It's in us. It's who we are. God is for you, and we are for you. So let's be for Birmingham.
Hey everybody, thanks again for being here today. Remember, Vacation Bible School is happening all week here at Mountaintop, where we believe that God is for you and that God is for the next generation. So please be in prayer for the kids that will be here. Pray that God will begin a life-changing work in them. And once again, if you're new here or if you would like to learn more about Mountaintop, go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen, or you can text the word NEXT to the number on your screen. You'll receive a link that will take you to our website where you can find out more about the next steps available to you here at Mountaintop. We would love an opportunity to connect with you. We'll see you back here next week at 9.15 and 11 a.m. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.